Joining us now is Martin Campbell, a former advisor to Ofcom and chair of the Broadcast Journalism Training Council. Hello, Martin. Hi, Tony. Uh, one of the discussions here, or perhaps the, the major discussion tonight, as, as reflected in tomorrow morning's uh, papers, The Independent has Murdoch the damning verdict on its front page. MP's ferocious report says Mogul not fit to lead empire. What are the repercussions if he indeed is, is found to be a not fit and proper person? Well, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think Ofcom are really left to make their own rules because there aren't many precedents for this sort of fit and proper test. Um, there's really only one winner of this, this sort of test, and that is with lawyers running about shouting trebles all around. I mean, Off, Ofcom probably hoped this morning when the news started trickling out that this committee was going to do the job for them. And then when the headline said, oh, Rupert Murdoch not fit and proper to run an international business, and then, oh, not not fit and proper, just not fit. And then, oh, well, actually, isn't the whole committee, it's about half the committee. I mean, I think there was a clear attempt to influence Ofcom here, but it's finished up as a real mess, and it's just demonstrated how difficult it's going to be for Ofcom to come to any conclusion about fit and proper. Mm. Well, they certainly can't, presumably, b b base any decision on this report because, because on, on the one hand, you've got the Labour and Liberal Democrat members saying, saying that he isn't a fit person, but on the other hand, the Conservatives yeah. who we just heard are saying there's no evidence whatsoever. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly right. I mean, it, it, is, it is a high barrier because um, lawyers will tell you that, OK, well, if, if someone has got convictions, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not a fit and proper person. So, you know, it, it's, it's a real court lovey situation. But the key here is, is where the committee did seem to agree is on the failure of corporate governance. Uh, the, the, the phrase I think used was a lack of effective corporate governance. Now, if that is accepted, it's very difficult then to think that Ofcom could come to any other conclusion mm. because, you know, if they weren't demonstrating effective corporate governance, how could they be fit well, to hold a license? But we just heard Therese Coffey there well, almost justifying that, saying, well, in a big organisation, it's OK to take your eye off the ball occasionally. Yeah, but I think what she was talking about was, was the one line about whether Rupert Murdoch was fit to run an international company, which is sort of slightly different and does demonstrate the, the, the whole mess that, that this has got into. OK. Um, and, and you're right, it is, it is thinking in a sort of political mire. Yep. Uh, well, Martin, thank you very much uh, for your contributions tonight. I will be speaking to the former Culture Secretary Ben Bradshaw on this subject later in the programme as well. Kate, it's all over the front pages tomorrow.